Hello, hello, good morning. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Thursday morning Technique Live at the Baking Memories online crop, coming to you from my business page because Facebook is what it is. <laughs> so I'm just giving everybody a few moments to click over from the event page and um, the replay of this video will also be linked to the event page. So if you're not watching live, you can just click the link later on over on um, the Baking Memories Crop event page. So we'll get it in both places and hopefully everybody will have a chance to view the video. Good morning. If you're popping on to watch, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And we are going to be doing an interesting technique today to make a dimensional card um, that's really not difficult, but kind of fun. And so I thought I would share it with you. Now, just to note, um, this idea is one that has been presented by uh, Jennifer McGuire as well. I don't know if it's original to her or not, but um, it's um, that's where I have seen it presented. And so just a shout out to Jennifer McGuire. Hey, Mary, good morning. You're home again, are you? Did you have a wonderful trip? Um, wow, you're like the traveler extraordinaire. <laughs> so we're going to be looking at a paper collection um, throughout the crop that's in the brand new October to December catalog that just started um, at the October 1st. And we're going to be looking at this one freshly baked. And if you see this layout here, you're going to recognize where I scooped the title for my crop, Baking Memories, because I thought this is just a really fun theme, right? We all, even if we aren't bakers, we love baked goods for the most part, right? Almost all of us have had a sweet tooth at some time in our lives. And we have memories of people in our life who were bakers um, or still are bakers, and you know, the smell of freshly baked cookies or breads or things is just, uh, it's so wonderful. So I thought we would do baking memories, and so today we're going to be looking at a stamp set that I was actually doing a live with last night, if you follow my um, Life as Art Let's Create um, group, and it is this one here, which is the Freshly Baked Scrapbooking Stamp and Thin Cuts. And so we're going to be using that today, but we're going to be making a dimensional kind of card, kind of a little bit poppy. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you want to call it. It kind of has some, has some dimension to it. Anyway, but it does fit flat inside of a regular envelope, which is awesome because we want to be able to mail the things that we create and I'm kind of sitting over here, but I suppose I should be more in the middle. I've got my Versamat flipped over on this side to help me do some stamping. And we're going to begin with um, a piece of Scarlet cardstock. And this is one of the coordinating cardstocks that goes with that freshly baked collection. And I've cut this cardstock, let me just remind myself, to seven and a quarter by five and a half. So seven and a quarter by five and a half. And so, as you know, a standard size card is four and a quarter by five and a half. So we've already got our five and a half dimension, but we're going to have to do a little bit of work on um, this um, side that's seven and a quarter. I'm just going to take a sip of water here. One moment. I can feel a bit of a tickle in my throat coming on. <laughs> but we're going to do some scoring, and that's how we're going to get that um, seven and a quarter down to the four and a quarter. So what we want to do is line it up on our Versamat or on our scoreboard, and I'm going to come way over here to the side to do my scoring so that I can use my measurements, just lining it up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to score it in some half-inch intervals at the edge. So... Working along this long seven and a quarter inch length, we're going to score at half an inch. Don't worry, no eighths on this one, just half an inch. And then we're going to move over half an inch and score at one inch. So we're scoring at half an inch, one inch, 
and then one and a half. Okay, so we've made three score lines half an inch apart at half inch, one inch, and one and a half. And then we're going to come to this side and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to score at, I always have to remind myself, five and three quarters. And if you like to do it the easy way, you're just going to score half one and one and a half from this edge. So you could spin it around, but we're going <laughs> to do it this way. Five and three quarters, then six and a quarter. then six and three quarters. But truly, it's just half inch intervals again. Okay, we can move this out of the way. So there we have our piece of scarlet cardstock, and we've scored it at half an inch, one inch, one and a half, and then again from this side, half an inch, one inch, one and a half. And now our center piece is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half. But what we want to do is we want to um, do uh, a little bit of some cutting out here in the center. So I'm just going to line it up on my Versamat. And I'm going to bring in, now this is a retired product, I believe, um, the stitched rectangle frames. And I'm going to be using the middle size frame from those stitched rectangle frames and I'm going to be putting it right here in the center, holding it down with some washi tape, <clears throat> because we want to create a little window on the front of our card. So what I'm going to do is just going to line it up, and you're going to end up, if you're using this particular frame, you're going to end up with about a half of an inch showing all the way around. And I like to tape my things like this to the inside, because the inside is what we're getting rid of or saving for another project. Um, but it, in case my washi tape's too sticky, it's not going to tear any of my card stock that I want to keep from my card. So let's bring in the die cut machine. And we're going to run it through. It's always nice when you're doing something big like this. If you can try and put it on as much of an angle as you can going through your machine, it's not going to be a lot because our paper's you know, five and a five and a half inches wide, but a little bit of an angle helps and then just run it through. There we go. Scooch that out of the way. And lift that off and there's an extra frame that you can save for something else. And there's an inside here. That again, you can save for something else, a nice little stitched um, journal card or something. And take our washi tape off. And now we're going to do some folding on those score lines, okay? So this is going, and I've got dust off of my <laughs> die cut machine, all the little paper bitties. Okay, so we've got our three score lines on either side. The score line that is closest to the opening of your window, we want to fold that score line to the back. So you're just going to take it and you're going to fold it like this. In fact, the easiest is to flip it over and fold it to the back like that. Okay. And then the rest of these score lines, we're going to create like an accordion. We're going back and forth and back and forth. And let me just restart my video because... Um, it kind of jammed up on me. So our next score line, we're going to fold it this way. And basically, you know you're doing it right if they all line up in a zigzag behind the edge of your frame. And then the last score line, we're going to fold back. There we go. And when I pick it up, you can see, maybe I'll turn it this way. This is the front of our card. And then we've got our zigzag going back forward, back, okay? And it all lines up behind that left side of the frame. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. So this first score line, we're folding to the back, just like that. And then the next one, we're folding forward. And then the last one, we're folding back. There we go. And so now we've created 
a frame with a little zigzags on either side that are kind of springy. <laughs> and it, when you lay it down, it kind of creates a nice little shadow box, right? So let's bring in our card base, and I'm just using a standard card base, four and a quarter by five and a half. It's already pre-scored in the center, and you want to fold your score line with the bump side to the inside of your card. So just fold it like that. And I'm going to make sure, I always check that my fold is on the left because I'm creating a vertical card because quite often I get halfway through my card and realize I've made a left-handed card. <laughs> then I want to bring in a piece of pattern paper from the paper collection from Freshly Baked. And that is this fun one that looks like a grid, kind of like um, uh, a baking rack or a... Um, you know, some people have those um, silicone sheets that they roll things out on and they have grids and marks and lines all over them. Very similar. The other side is this gorgeous polka dot, which is beautiful too. Um, and the reason why I say a baking rack is because the thin cuts that go with this scrapbooking stamp set have a baking rack too. But I decided to go with the pattern paper for this um, to kind of reduce a little bit of bulk. And so I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Oh, I suppose I should tell you how big a piece it is. That would be helpful. So this is four inches by five and a quarter. So it's a little bit smaller than our card front. And I'm just going to glue that down, centered on the front of the card. And if it's not quite in the center, it's okay because we're going to put our frame around it. So just make sure we've got that stuck down nicely. I'm going to close that. And then for our frame, our frame is going to sit right on top of here. So what we need to do is we need to apply adhesive just to these. Now, if you're patient, if you're patient, you can use liquid glue, but I am not patient. And so I'm going to use my double-sided adhesive <laughs> and hope that I get it lined up nicely. First try, because if you don't, then there's not much you can do about it. With the liquid adhesive, you got a little bit of wiggle room, right? That's the thing that we like about a liquid adhesive. If you were worried about how well your tape sticks, you might want to use red tape or um, score tape. But I don't think it will be a problem. This is not a mechanism that is being opened or closed or anything like that. It's just, it's just there. Alrighty, now I'm going to... Fiddle with my video for half a second because it seems to have stopped on me again. And I don't want to miss any of your lovely comments when you're chatting with me. Hey, Jody, good morning. Ooh, you're joining from work. So fun. You're sneaking a peek at what's happening at the crop. Love it. And Michelle watching from the dock waiting for our shuttle boat. Oh, you guys, and I hope you guys are having fun on your vacation. I saw your photos from yesterday. Looked like a lot of fun. And Robin's watching from work, too. Okay, I'm going to turn this so I've got my fold down here. And I'm going to squeeze this little accordion bit all together and line it up along the edge and hope that I've got it lined up good. And you'll notice that I'm keeping this other side up in the air. I'm doing that on purpose so that it doesn't stick down before I'm ready. And then I'm going to come over to this side and kind of <laughs> get it stuck down. I'm going to start at one edge, and there we go. You kind of just got to hold your breath the right way. So now you can see what happens when we put this on the front of the card. So here's our card opening, but in the front here, because of that folded paper, it's going to squish when you put it in an envelope, but when it comes back out, it's going to kind of bulge out like that and it's going to create a little shadow box on the front but it's perfectly flat when you stick it in your envelope how fun and there's no you know foam tape or anything doing it it's just the nature of the way the paper moves now i want to add some decoration on here so we're going to do some stamping so let me just move that out of the way we're bringing in that beautiful um, freshly baked scrapbooking stamp set. And we're going to use this sentiment for the front of our card. Life is short, lick the bowl. We're also going to be using some of these 
lovely little critters and cookies here to create some embellishments. And I'm using also the thin cuts to cut out um, just some plain shapes so that we kind of look like we have baked cookies and also some decorated cookies. Okay, so let's get started with our stamping. I've got a piece of white daisy here and I'm grabbing my intense black ink for this. And I'm going to be stamping the little snowman because he's so sweet. Anything that becomes a cookie is pretty sweet. And then I've got my little gingerbread man. And we're going to stamp him. And I'm leaving a little bit of space because remember, we're going to die cut these. And also the little cookie heart. Because who doesn't love a cookie heart? There we go. And then I also want to stamp our sentiment. And for that, I have a piece of the Seabrook cardstock that I've cut to four and a quarter by two inches. And I'm going to stamp that using mocha for the ink. Because I thought, you know what, we're going, we're talking about baking. So a nice chocolatey brown would be lovely. So we're going to ink this up. And I want to make sure that I ink it really well because part of the sentiment is this filled in banner. And so it's always good to make sure you get lots of good ink on there. This has been seasoned already. And then I'm just going to line it up and stamp it in the middle of that. And one thing that I like about this particular stamp and using it on this particular card is that we are going to take advantage of the shape of the um, banner here to create a little bit of a cutout and a little bit of shape to the front of our card, which is kind of already done for us because it's just right there <laughs> in the stamp itself. But we need to do some coloring on here because these are going to be our finished product cookies. So what I want to do is I want to bring in some of my um, tri-blend markers. i got little pieces of things everywhere. And the first thing I'm going to do is my little snowman here. I'm going to be adding some dark red blend, the light color, just to the hat and scarf. So I'm just going to quickly add that. And because we used our intense black ink, we can just go right ahead and color. We don't have to worry about the ink moving or bleeding or doing anything weird. We just go ahead and apply the color. And this is going to be pretty simple coloring because we don't have to do anything too fancy to these cute little cookies. And then our next little guy here, the gingerbread man, I've just got my head tip because I'm trying to read the, read the names. Uh, we're going to be using the gold brown blend for him. And starting with the mid color, we're going to add some color to our cookie. Oh, so sweet. So again, this is the gold brown blend. So making him a nice little golden brown little gingerbread man. So cute. Or he could be a sugar cookie but we're kind of going to color them like a gingerbread man. And I'm avoiding the ends of his little feet and hands here because it looks like they've applied some white icing. So if I just leave it white, it's all good. There we go. And then I'm actually going to take the dark tone of the gold brown blend and I'm going to just do an outline. <clears throat> around this little guy, like so. We're keeping our shading and everything really simple. We're just going to do a little outline. It kind of makes him look three-dimensional a bit. There we go. And then our little cookie here. I've got my pale pink blend, and I'm going to take the mid color of the pale pink blend and just color in the center of my cookie. One of the colors that is in this freshly baked collection is Flamingo. So pinks go really well with this. And then I'm going to take the dark 
of the pale pink blend and color the outside all the way around. And see all these lovely dots and things that are on these? You could totally take your liquid pearls or your stickles and add some fun colors on here to look like little candy embellishments. That would be super cute. And then I'm going to take the Coral Blend, and I'm trying to remember, I think I used the dark. Did I use the dark? Sure, I used the dark from the Coral Blend, and I'm just going to go around and do my outline with this, because it's a little darker than the darkest pink. All the way around. Lovely. And then for the parts that are white, I'm going to take my Ice Gray Blend, the lightest one, and I'm just going to add some shadow. In fact, I'm going to do it on the red here too. Just add some shadow all the way around. Our little gingerbread man. Isn't he so cute? All the way. So easy, and I'll do it here on this little guy too. I don't have to go around on the brown parts because that's already been done, and that's already been done, so we're good with that. And so we're going to scooch those out of the way, but I'm also going to bring in some pieces that I die cut. Oh no, I'm not quite done. One moment. <laughs> I forgot something. I'm going to use my gold yellow blend. And I'm just reminding myself which one I was using. Yes, I think that. So my gold yellow blend the mid-tone, and I'm going to go around my cookies and just create, actually, I think I was going to use the light one, but we'll go with this now because we've started. I'm just going to create a halo around my stamped colored image with this gold yellow blend because when you do the, you know, the royal icing on things, you usually don't go completely to the edge of the cookie. And so when we're die cutting out these cookies, I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have the color of the cookie showing around the icing, right? We're going to pretend that this has all been decorated with icing. So let's just go ahead and go all the way around. It doesn't have to be fancy. In fact, I'm probably going out wider than I need to, but it's easier to go a little wider than have gaps. <laughs> so all the way around, adding a little bit of color. This is also fun to do if you're stamping on white and you're doing coloring and then you want to have an extra wide black edge on the outside um, is to go ahead and color around it with your black marker, your true black and then die cut it out and that extra edge will be um, the darker color while the inside is colored perfectly in the colors that you want it to be. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a trick to the eye to do that. Okay, so then we're going to bring in our die cuts for these. Let me grab some washi tape to hold them down. Some people like to stamp their image first and then um, and then thin cut. And some people like to thin cut first and then stamp. And I kind of like doing it this way myself. It's just personal preference. I have an easier time lining up a thin cut around my already stamped image than I do trying to get my image centered on something that's already been die cut. So I'm just going ahead and taping those thin cuts down around my images. So cute. Oh my goodness. People were commenting yesterday that this, um, this stamp set is just so, so cute. And it's true. <laughs> I love when we have stamp sets like this, where it's just really fun. And so I'm just going to run that through. die cut those and then I've also gone ahead ahead of time and cut out some
some images that are just on cardstock, just like that. And those are going to be our undecorated cookies, right? So I've got the little snowflake and the snowman and the heart. So we've got a little variation bringing in some pieces we haven't used before. And so we've got those pieces ready. And now for the little extra detail that we're going to do on this um, stamped image. What I'm going to do is I want to get the shape of this banner exaggerated, but keep this bottom part rectangular. So I'm going to come in from the side and just snip like that, just above the L and just in the little nook here from the banner. And then I'm going to fussy cut the shape around the banner, leaving that halo edge all the way around. And this is nice because it's got the line for you to follow. Easy peasy. There's no thin cuts for these, so you got to do it yourself. And then when I get to this side, I kind of eyeball, okay, so a little bit above the L on this side and snip straight in from the edge, and then I can just keep fussy cutting around until I join that, just like that. And there we have created a fun little shape to the top of that sentiment. How fun is that? All right. Good morning, Jennifer. Nice to see you're watching. Hey, Melissa. You saw order the digital set. Yes, it it's so fun. It's got all these fun little graphics. So if you're somebody who likes to do um, work with the SVG files on your die cutting machine, then that is perfect. Now this piece is going to go down here at the bottom. So we're not going to add adhesive everywhere. We're just going to go across the bottom like this. You could use liquid too if you want. And then we're just going to do a little bit up the side here and up the side here. And that is all we need. And just peel off the backing. Once you've got everything ready, it really comes together. It's not a hard card to put together, and I, I kind of like that. Especially if you're thinking about um, maybe if you're the kind of person that sends out a lot of greeting cards during the season. Um, you need to have cards that come together pretty, pretty quick if you have to make a lot. So there we go, and now we've got that nice pop-up, and you can see there's lots of dimension there. But again, it just squishes right flat to go in your envelope. And now what we want to do is we want to add our little, um, oh, one more thing. I almost forgot. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow on my little cookies here. So I'm going to go with the light ice gray blend and just do like we did on the iced ones. We're just going to create a little dimension around the edges, make it a little more 3D by adding a line of that ice gray all the way around and you know what with shadows sometimes there's the whole think about where your light source is and put the shadow on the one side and yada yada but you know what you can just do it as simply as going all the way around because <laughs> sometimes that's the easiest thing to do just make it look like the edges all curve down a little bit by adding that Plus it helps it stand out a little bit. We're going to attach these to that pattern paper in the background. And these are kind of a light color because they're kind of like, uh, you know, a baked sugar cookie or a very buttery cookie from the looks of them. This is the is it shortbread or is it honey butter that's in this collection? I have to check that now because <laughs> I've forgotten and my brain doesn't always come up with the correct colors. Let me see. Yes, it's the honey butter from the coordinating cardstock, which, you know, just sounds perfect for, you know, cutting out cookies, honey butter. It's just ideal, right? So let's add our little star. It's going to be cooling on our rack. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the very center of my cookie so that if the edges lift up a little bit, it create little shadow. And that's perfectly fine because these are supposed to look like dimensional cookies, right? So there's our little heart and our little snowman hanging out on the, on the cookie rack. How cute is that? 
Okay, and then our iced cookies. We need to have them join in the fun. So let's see, actually, those might be better off adding them with glue as well. So let's see, we'll add a little guy down here, hanging out. Actually, I'll go ahead and add the glue right there. Now I'm going to have to try and keep him inside the confines of the card, okay? So that's also why I added it to the frame, because if he sticks out, he won't fit in the envelope, and that would be sad. <laughs> so then our little gingerbread man, we're going to stick him on there like that. So cute. And then our little heart can kind of hang around up here at the top, like so. I think that's so fun that you can create that layer um, behind and then the layer in front as well. And then why don't we add a few sprinkles with our freshly baked dots? Because, you know, we got to have some lovely little candy, candy happy moments on our beautiful freshly baked card. So let's see. I'm thinking I could add one of the hearts right to the center of that. Maybe this sparkly Seabrook one which will help bring that Seabrook color up from the bottom. Oh, that's fun. And then what about maybe some buttons on our little gingerbread man? How about some little pink buttons? So cute. So cute. And they don't even have to be the same color. You could do the random little gumdroppy type buttons. But I'm going to go with little pink ones. And let me see, maybe we'll add a little star or something to our little snowman's hat. And what have we got? We've got yellow stars. We've got white stars. We've got pink stars. Um, no sparkly stars, but that's okay. How about a little is there brown ones? There's a little brown star. Let's add a little brown star to his hat. Just like that. A little star. So cute. Alrighty. Let's take a look at what we have done. Oh, one other thing. And this is something I did last night. And I think it just turned out beautifully. Is I took my gel pen. And in these inside letters here, I just took my white gel pen and I colored in those letters just to give it a little bit different color from the rest of the cardstock and to kind of make it stand out a little bit more just to change it to white. And I think that was really effective and it looked really pretty. So if you feel like you could color those in with your white gel pen, then absolutely. Or you, oh, the metallic gel pens or the sparkly gel pens. That would be fun too. I might have to try uh, this again with a sparkly one. That would be fun. So then it will look like sparkly icing or like the um, the sprinkle sugars, the colored sugars that you put on cookies. So many ideas that you can do with this sort of stamp set. So there we go, we have our card base that we added our pattern paper from the um, freshly baked collection that looks sort of like a baking rack grid in behind. Then we layered up the card stock that has just been folded. So you um, any size will work. You just have to add about an inch and a half and then create those half inch score lines to fold it back. And the more zigzag you do, the more dimension you'll have. Um, the less zigzags you do, because you can even do it with just two, um, the less dimension you will have. So it just depends on how much you want it to pop up when it's completed. And then um, cutting out that frame with our stitched rectangle frames, adding on the sentiment that we went ahead and trimmed around. So a little bit of fussy cutting to add shape. Then of course, adding in our um, shadowy, um, thin cut little cookie pieces, and of course our um, completed decorated cookies on top with a little bit of those fun 
freshly baked dots and the idea of inking around the edge, coloring around the edge to create that cookie look. I think it is just so fun. And of course, you can add more sentiment on the inside of your card. But how sweet is that? And it squishes right down flat to pop into your envelope and then pops up for a nice little display piece when you're ready to share it. All right, I hope you guys loved that card design and technique of creating an easy pop-up card. Have a wonderful uh, rest of your morning. You will see on the event page that I have posted this morning's game that you can participate in, as well as all three challenges for the day. And there will be more games coming as the day goes on, as well as, as long as well as some other fun stuff. And we will be back again for chat and craft. And I'm saying this to remind you that the schedule is slightly modified. And so our chat and craft will be happening at 12 noon until 2 o'clock. And we had to shift that from our usual 1 o'clock start uh, because I have to go pick my daughter up from school this afternoon. <laughs> so we're starting our chat and craft time at noon, and I will post the link when that happens. And, um, and then we'll be continuing on with our day with all sorts of fun things. All right. We will see you soon. Toodaloo. Bye.